At his first medium-term budget policy statement in Parliament, Finance Minister Tito Mboweni highlighted an initiative that aims to promote inclusive economic growth. Mboweni said that South African policymakers, together with local and international experts, demonstrate their commitment to a more robust and shared South African economy through their work in Southern Africa towards inclusive economic development. The program is a three-year initiative aiming to improve the interface between cutting-edge research and policy formulation by engaging policymakers and researchers in a shared process of knowledge creation and capacity building. For more on this, I'm joined by Finn Tarp, who's the director of UNU WIDA um, on Skype. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Give us an indication of what exactly TIDE is and evidence-based policy creation, as well as what sectors are going to be targeted. Thank you very much. The SA TIDE program basically has six work streams. So we're working on creation of jobs, firm dynamics, and what that sort of means for the overall uh, good job promotion. We're working on public revenue mobilization. So this means that we are using administrative tax data to try to understand economic incentives issues of tax evasion and illicit flows. We are working on macroeconomic modeling and policy formulation to try to see what are some of the overall uh, perspectives for the South African economy and the South African economy in the regional perspective. We're working on inequality, which, as I'm sure everybody will realize, is fundamental uh, in coming to grips with the socioeconomic challenges of South Africa. We're working on climate and energy. There's a whole range of complex issues regarding climate and energy, both as a constraint, but also as a possibility for furthering the development of South Africa. And then we are working on a regional cooperation dimension in order to make sure that the program benefits both South Africa, but also the region at large. Some would say that South Africa's problem is not necessarily in policy formulation because we already do have quite good policies in place. It's the implementation um, where we lag behind. So when you're considering the different policy and research, are you also looking at ways to ensure that the policy gets implemented in a way that works in perhaps curbing inequality and the other issues that you've raised? I mean, as the finance minister said in, in his speech today, it's absolutely critical for us to make sure that the link between policy formulation and implementation and the good research is core and center to this program. So the answer to your question is that we do that by engaging with the policymakers to make sure that what we come up with as policy suggestions are indeed understood and are indeed paid attention to in the policy making and implementation process. Okay, South Africa is one of the first countries to come up with something called tax micro simulation models to guide policy on employment and enterprise development goals. Talk to us about what this is and how it worked in South Africa and then moved um, towards the rest of the region. Yeah. <clears throat> when you have access to anonymized tax administration data, then what you can do, for example, is that you can much better understand how companies, how firms respond to different thresholds, for example, in the tax structure. What that means is that we are much more able to see how firms react to changes in that structure. This means that you are able to come up with suggestions as to how the tax system should be established, should be developed, where the appropriate thresholds are, and also to take measures towards tax evasion when it occurs. Okay. One of the targets of your uh, program is a minimum of 75 participants in the Young Scholars Program. Why is it important to include youth and what exactly does that entail? What it entails is that in addition to the sort of research policy formulation link, which is critical in this program, there is inbuilt a capacity building uh, dimension which cuts across all of the activities. Um, I, I'm by now uh, 67 years old. I've been working uh, with South Africa issues for about 40 years. That work that has been going on for a long time needs to be continued. Youngsters need to be trained. 
they need to start engaging, doing quality research for the future. The future belongs to the youth. They need to be capacity trained, developed, so that they can face the problems facing tomorrow and facing them and the problems that our generation has not managed to solve. Mm. At the end of 2020, when you look back, um, how, will you ex uh, how will you assess rather the success of SA Tide? The key parameters that we will be looking at in seeing whether this was a successful program will be, have we actually come up with a series, about 150 quality research products? Have these quality research products Products actually being fed into the policy making process in such a way that we can point to areas where policy implementation has improved and then can we point to younger researchers who have been trained who have gotten to know and understand the economic analysis tools I believe that economic analysis is more important than ever the evidence base that is required to make the right choices under challenging circumstances. So those will be the kinds of uh, issues that we will, in a more direct sense, be looking at. And of course, the overall, uh, how can you say, assessment criteria will be whether the South African economy and the Southern African economies are basically getting on a more productive uh, growth path. What do you think that growth, our growth target should be in the next three years and what should we be expecting as South Africans in the best case scenario as well as the worst case scenario? Well, I mean, a worst case scenario is that the present lack of growth continues or even worsens if the international community does not increase its confidence in the South African government's capacity uh, to mobilize investment resources to underpin growth and development, that's a worst case scenario. A lot is being done. It's obviously extremely uh, good that there is now a forward looking government that is trying to do its best to create that confidence and show that there is a way out of the present uh, crisis. It's very clear that South Africa, compared to many other countries, has a lot of things that sort of can be considered pluses. Take just the relatively well-developed infrastructure as one example. A very good projection, a very good scenario would be that the present sort of uh, growth stagnation turns around, that investment comes in, that the right choices are being made in terms of getting the different sectors of society to actually work together to take the right choices in terms of addressing inequality issues, make sure that South Africa plays a positive, constructive role in the region, and that overall, this sort of favorable process then leads to underpinning growth and development processes. I'm not gonna give you an exact number um, on that growth target because that is something that is at this point not very easy to do. Thanks so much but for your time. That's, that's, all, so that's all we have time for, Mr. Top. We really appreciate your time on Full View this evening, and we will continue having a conversation around South Africa's economy and, of course, that medium-term budget policy statement earlier on. Finn Top, Director of UNU Wider, speaking to us. It's time for some sports news now. Simon.